Angie Alive and welcome to my channel. I've been promising that I will do some plant-based recipes. So today I'm in my kitchen and I am going to show you one of my favorite new plant-based recipes. Well first, if you're new to my channel, um, I'm Gigi Alive and I usually do videos about health and wellness and also about um, reselling online, particularly Poshmark and thrifting. Um, I just started doing plant-based, mainly plant-based, this, this year, actually a couple of months before the start of 2020. And um, before that, I was just pretty much a vegetarian who occasionally would have fish. And now I'm trying to give up the fish and give up the cheese, and that's the only real dairy I have, is the cheese. But watching the um, documentary, Cowspiracy, What the Health, and Game Changer, Hope, and works over knives. These documentaries have really helped me understand how important for my health and to cure my illnesses, literally cure them with food. And that is what I've been trying to do. So I um, want to start by saying a lot of people still miss the texture of meat. So that's why they make these wonderful meatless crumbles. And they're very um, consistent with how a real ground beef would taste. But I have decided I usually just do um, I, I usually don't do the frozen ones so I decided I'm going to try these frozen ones that actually tried this one already and my family loved it but I'm going to try these three and see which one is the best which one is the winner according to what my daughters who recently decided they're going to do plant-based diet with me too giving it up for Lent giving up the meat for Lent and when I say mainly plant-based, I mean that basically you don't always have to um, be completely plant-based. Um, I'm not completely anything. I mean, trust me, sometimes I will have, like I said, some fish. Um, but I want to give that up as well. So I'm always trying to improve myself and make myself a little bit better with my diet. So, and that Cowspiracy was one of those um, shows that really got me to understand that I really needed to give up, not just the red meat, but also, of course, the fish. So, let's get started. First off, these come in these little packages, which are very convenient, and they're frozen. So, if I am going to cook these, I just want to cook it similar to the way that I would cook meat. I always add a little ginger, and I love these pop-out gingers. These are awesome. And you just pop out how much you need, which is um, basically one cube equals one teaspoon. So that's what I do, I do one teaspoon. And I then take my meat product and put it in the skillet. Over here on the skillet, as you see, I actually have three skillets to separate them. So you can see they already have the ginger in there. I'm not adding any extra oils or anything. So the first one I put in, this is the last one I put in. This, these crumbles look different. Basically, I'm gonna put this right here so I remember this is beyond meat. Okay, and this one is Morning Star. They all kind of have a different texture to them. As you can see, and this one is gardenia. Okay, so the other thing I do to make sure it's seasoned really well is I have already chopped up my onions and peppers, and so my onions and peppers are already chopped up, and I had added a little water. I also added a little a teaspoon of ginger to this as well. Now I'm going to turn on my get it going the thing about this is that it really cooks up very fast unlike ground meat because it's kind of like already cooked I mean people probably could eat it without even um, without even actually seasoning it but Burners going. 
You don't have to have them on super duper high. So I want to make sure I'm getting it all right with the heat and everything. Okay, the other thing I do is I'm going to add some Rotel, okay? The Rotel helps flavor it a little bit. So I'm going to add... A little bit of Rotel. I'm going to add half a cup of Rotel. Actually, I take that back. That's not half a cup. That is a fourth a cup. Sorry. To each of these. And actually, it looks like they actually have a little bit more in one of the bags, even though they're about the same amount so that can mess up the flavor a little bit or change a little bit i think but i think on that one i put a little bit more so when i am adding the rotel i'm just going to stir it up a little bit because these are pretty dry just stir it up a little bit and my onions and peppers, I'm going to do a spoonful in each of them. And these onion peppers have already been on the um, stove for a little bit, so they're pretty much soft already, which is good. I think I just got them to where they were soft. I'm gonna go ahead and put two. I got enough here to, to spread around. Like I said, my bottom of my pan had the ginger in it. And now I'm adding a little bit of onion pepper that has ginger already with a little garlic. And I'm gonna just stir that in and see what the consistency will be like. I think the key to having um, meatless grounds like this is making sure that you season it really well. So if I see that it's a little dry, like this one looks a little dry over here, I'm going to add a little bit more of the onions and peppers because that is going to help. That is going to really help with making sure that the flavor comes out. So it, it makes it more of a... Um, it has, a, it has a texture that's more consistent with ground beef. And when you are, are um, plant-based and you're looking for a meatless crumble, you basically want something that is going to be, it's going to be similar to meat. Because you're, you're missing, you're craving that. But these are not actual it's not an actual animal, it's an animal product. So it's not going to cause you any problems with your digestive system and backing you up or you know, making you feel full and bloated. And if you want some junk food, this is the best kind of junk food as a vegan because even though, you know, tacos may not be having a salad, it may not be like having greens, it may not be like um, having something super healthy, at least you're having something that is plant-based and nutritious. Okay, so there we go. Again, like I said, when I start to see that it looks a little dry, I'm just adding a little bit more of the onions and peppers and garlic seasoning. Make sure that it doesn't get 
too sticky to the bottom of my skillet because no one wants a skillet that is going to be sticking, right? The more moist the meat is, the better it's going to taste. You don't want it too dry. And again, this is a meatless crumble. So I keep saying meat, but it's not meat. It looks like the Beyond Meat looks the most like ground beef to me. It really does. It really does. Um, these kind of remind me of already made, like a taco meat that you might find if you um, go to like Taco Cabana, you know, or Taco Bell. So I'm really curious to see what the different flavors are going to be like as I stir it in. Make sure the season gets in there. Oh, now once it's starting to get to where it looks like it's cooking really well, I then want to add a little of this all purpose seasoning, okay? And you just sprinkle a little bit into taste. I'm not a big person who has to measure everything like super, like specifically, because I like to make sure that I'm um, tasting and knowing what my family likes. So, if your family likes it more salty, then I would probably add more than a sprinkle of this, but I don't really like it too salty. You've got enough salt in your um, mixture of your Rotel, and also, I believe there's some inside of this Beyond Meat and the Morning Star and the Garden Meatless Crumbles, so sodium is not one of my big things that I go for. I don't like food that's super salty. So that all-purpose seasoning, that all-purpose seasoning is, um, it's nice for a little flavor if you like it a little salty, but I don't like to, to pour it on too thick. It looks like this is almost done, seriously. I mean, it really looks like it's getting to the finishing point already. And I just had them on a medium heat, and I just put them in the skillet, and you saw it maybe was Three to five minutes I've had them on here already. And let's see who's going to be the winner when chicken dinner. <laughs> no chicken dinner. No. <laughs> okay. So by now, it's starting to look really like meat. And it was looking like meat when you take it out. But it's really looking more like it smells delicious. It smells like um, I'm making tacos. <laughs> it smells like... The house is starting to feel like I've really cooked uh, um, a taco Thursday. Today's Thursday, so it's taco Thursday. Um, so anyway, so now I'm going to go ahead and turn down my heat to low on everything. Okay. Now, what I do with this Del Monte vegetable bean Mexican style mixture is I just add it to the remainder of my onion and pepper so that way they can have a little something that can have some extra protein with the beans on the side here when I am ready to serve I like them to make their own little pot their own little Taco, I call them pots, but they're bowls. They're like little bowls. I'll show you that in a second. So, I just put the beans in just in the last because, you know, of course, they're also already cooked. Let me turn up a little bit on this one. Yeah. Okay. Over here now. The other thing that I have started to do is because... Everybody likes rice, most people, and it gives you a little carb with something. I like potatoes too, but with the rice, I add a little bit of vegetables to it. So, like one of the hashtags I use on Instagram is, how many vegetables have you eaten today? So you've got your corn, you've got your carrots, and actually my good friend Nina actually had um, told me to use the freshest ingredients, and so she actually encouraged me to do fresh carrots, and I mean, the peppers, and corn, and peas, and Instead of frying it, I think I even have a few slices of green beans in there. So instead of frying it, I just basically put it in the oven. And after I, after the rice was done, I mixed it all in. 
and add a little bit of ginger, of course, and a little bit of um, black pepper, and paprika, and a little bit of garlic salt. So that is my rice that's on the side. Now the other thing that I'm doing is trying to get into the cheese. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's hard to give up. It really is. Real cheese. With your real cheese on all of like me. But this cheese, if you melt it really well, it tastes pretty good on these potato bits. It tastes very similar. And it is a go veggie, vegan, cheesy blend. And it's Mexican style. So this is actually 55% more calcium, 90% less saturated fat, no GMOs and no cholesterol. And it says on the back, the first and finest, we created the cheese alternative category for over 40 years and blissfully cheese experience for cheese lovers who crave our slices and shreds melts, savor just like cheese. Now, I personally think it needs to like really um, melt, melts differently than it does regular cheese. So when you put it on, I actually like to stick it in the oven for a little bit. So that way it melts on top. So here we go. Oh, another thing I like to add is some chunky salsa because you know how many vegetables can get in. And on top, when I'm all done, I add a little bit of guacamole. Go vegan guacamole, okay? Um, avocado is so, so good for you. It's one of those really good oils. Okay, so now it looks like we're ready to make our boat. And these are the coolest things. They just came out with these recently. Ortega, Ortega makes them, I believe. And they're just, you simply put the meat inside and you, the meatless crumble, sorry. And then you add your cheese or your beans or your rice and you add a little um, salsa even if you like and then put it in the oven. And then you can add some more guacamole on top. So it makes it really creamy when you do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. Now here's the deal. It's gonna be hard for me to remember. So I'm gonna remember this is the way I'm holding it. So I'm gonna go with Beyond Meat here I'm gonna go here for the garden, garden, and then this one for the morning star. And I'm making an extra for my daughter because she's filming me, so I, I owe her big. So beyond meat. Now they're like crumbly crumbles, pretty thick. And then morning star in the middle. And just a spoonful, actually a spoonful, it might be too much. No, nope, it's just enough, just a spoonful. And then garden. Oh, goodness. I'm gonna do it again. Garden, inside. How I can always tell which one is what is actually because the meatless crumbles of um, Beyond Meat really do look more, they look more like a, um, a thicker meat. Okay, so there we go. There we go. And like I said, you have to add the cheese and then stick it in the oven for a little bit because it takes a little longer for that cheese to melt on top. I'm just sprinkling it on there. A little more for you on this side. Popping that in the oven. A little more. Jokey. I just want to talk to you really quick about, and I'm going to stir my, my tea a little bit. I want to talk to you a little bit about becoming plant-based. Number one, 
Being plant-based is something that, like I said earlier, will help you if you have any kind of autoimmune illness, like I have, if you have um, issues with your weight. But being a plant-based person does not mean you want to be super healthy all the time. So I want to just try to remind you guys that it is a challenge for me with my weight all the time, and it's a challenge for me to, um, my dog. <laughs> It's a challenge for me to remember not to eat the wrong foods. And I did have gastric um, bypass surgery. So one thing that I have to remind myself is I don't need to eat a lot of bread. It's not going to digest well. I don't need to eat a lot of sugars. It's not going to digest well. And I don't need to eat a lot of um, fried foods. So if you were to have something like a fried taco, that's a meatless, you know, fried taco, or even like an impossible burger, I mean, you can say, well, yeah, it's an impossible burger. It's healthy for me because it's not meat and it's less calories and all that, which is true, but it's still going to be a lot of calories and it's still going to be harder to digest than if you just went straight for a salad or went straight for, and see, I'm not even a salad person. I much rather have, you know, greens that are cooked, mushrooms, um, Things that are, um, that are cooked, to me, digest much easier for people who have the gastric bypass um, than a salad. And plus, it just, to me, is easier for me to, um, to eat. So I don't, I don't feel an upset stomach. You may have a lot more gas whenever you're having a plant-based diet, and you may actually go to the bathroom a lot more, which is actually good for you. It's good to expel the gas, and it's good to make sure you use the restroom at least after every meal or every day at least. Um, preferably after every meal. A newborn baby is the best example of someone who has a great digestive system. Most newborn babies who are not fed meat products and are coming right out of the womb and then they're breastfed. You know, their digestive system, if you look at how they, you know, use the restroom and everything, it is the healthiest way to live. But what happens is after, as we start feeding that baby all this junk, their system gets all stuck and clogged up. And so then they have a harder time digesting their food and then illness can kick in and inflammation and autoimmune illnesses and even cancers. So if you would like to read more about that, go to Forks Over Knives documentary, watch What the Health, watch Cowspiracy, um, Game Changer is like one of my other favorites, Hope, um, read the China study with Dr. T. Colin Campbell and there's just so many great doctors out there. Um, Milton Mills, I'm sorry, Mills, yeah, Milton, Mills, Dr. Milton Mills, he's fabulous. So check them out on YouTube, check them out and read all their information, watch all the documentaries. Don't just take what one person is saying, actually really study it. Because when you start studying the science, and it is a science, you will see that we can actually heal ourselves and we can enjoy the food that we eat because it's not going to make us sick, okay? So I think it's time to take a nap. And take a taste. Oh, they're still not melted like I like, but I wanted to be honest, so it's only been a couple of minutes. If you want to keep them in longer, you can. I actually think I should keep them in longer, personally, but I do want to taste them. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull them out now and let y'all see how I make them. And like I said, if you want to put them in a little longer afterwards, that's fine. Um, it takes a little longer to, to melt that cheese. That's the bottom line. The cheese, it just takes a little longer to melt it. So if I were to make me one, I think I'm going to start with this one because I've never tasted this one before. I've tasted the other one before, but I'm just going to put them all on. I'm going to put them all on the plate. Just like that. And then I can add a little rice on the side or I can just do the guacamole. Sorry about that. Okay. Gracie, would you like to try it? Oh, Gracie says she doesn't want to try it. Okay. I think it's 
I'll have to try it myself and tell y'all what you, what I think. I don't have a whole lot of fucking on that one. Okay. Y'all ready? You may try. I can just use a plastic fork. That's it for it. Okay. I think that's all right. Grace, are you filming me at all? <laughs> It's a lot thicker. Mmm. One star is good. What do you think, Grace? Hmm. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. I think the winner. The winner is Guardian. It's the best one, I think. So, thank you so much. Subscribe, like, and share. And give me some comments. Let me know what you think. I'm doing, I'll be doing more videos. The next one I'm going to do is going to be on a pasta, zucchini pasta bake. And I'm going to um, do a meatless combo. I think it's going to be this one with that one. So, Check you later. Like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.